All right, I got to be dead honest with you guys. I have a bit of an edge on the market because of my family situation. And I'm not trying to toot my own horn. I wasn't born with money, but I did come into generational wealth around the age of 20. I'm 30 now, so take that with a grain of salt or take it however you want. But watching my family and the surrounding community build our international casino business into what it is today, the portfolio of hotels, various government contracting services, and that's just to name a few. We have investments around the board, and we do billions of dollars uh, in, in revenue a year. Now, I get to sit in on the internal meetings. I get to have conversations with our CEO, our CFO, everybody that runs our organization. All right. We just hired the CFO from uh, the Hard Rock Casino chain that built the Hard Rock International Casino chain into what it is today. So I'm hand in hand with multi-billion dollar businessmen. I understand how internal uh, operations work at these large corporations. Now, my family, you know, we've built this casino chain into what it is today through the way businesses work, borrowing and lending. Okay. We didn't start off and just go all in and uh, use all of our capital to build this thing. We borrowed from institutions, paid back our debt, borrowed again, pay down the debt, borrow again, pay down the debt. And that's how we have the private island in Aruba. That's how we're building and, and acquiring some of the largest casinos uh, in the United States. We just acquired what was known as the Bethlehem Sands. And now if you're in XRP Las Vegas right now, you know that there's a Sands casino out there. It's one of the most uh, famous casino chains there are. We bought the one in Pennsylvania. It's one of our highest grossing casinos right now. I say all this not to boast, but I say it because I feel like I have an edge on this market because the majority of crypto investors are what they call degenerates, right? Like it's a thing to call yourself a degen in the crypto market. I don't like that word and I don't like labeling myself a degenerate when it comes to business and investing because I have a long track record and the background and history to understand what a great investment looks like. That's how I got to meet with the Alabama Securities Commission is because my family is a, I guess you would say we're a powerful economic force in the Southeast. Now I say all this because I want to get right back into what we left off with yesterday, which is institutional DeFi and what it's going to look like in internal corporate treasury function, okay? My name is Andrew DeVilbus. Thank you for joining me today. I am a career investor. This channel is focused on enterprise grade distributed ledger technology only, all right? I don't do meme coins. I'm already financially free, so I'm not out here looking to do strategies that I cannot do for the long term, which is why I'm a core infrastructure investor in the cryptocurrency space, but only for the enterprise side, all right? I talk to my family about this all the time. You know, they're managing billions of dollars. And I would sound like a complete fool if I was telling them about this new investment, right? Dog with hat, right? No, I tell them about Ripple. I tell them about JP Morgan moving into this. I tell them about the legitimate players such as Deloitte, Digital Assets and Corporations, a treasurer's perspective. That is where DeFi is going to get its foothold and in internal treasury management. Now to link this back with what I was saying in the intro of the video, is that to build uh, to build a long-term company, a, a, a large corporation is going to be a lot of borrowing and lending, right? You need lenders to do this, okay? Now, what's interesting about the DeFi world is it's emerging as the perfect place for corporate treasurers and financial institutions 
to lend to and borrow from because you have the trust of the blockchain. So these regulated networks that have sufficient KYC, AML, and DID, the decentralized identity, clawback methods are going to play a very crucial role in the future of how corporates source liquidity. Now, that is a big, big thing, okay? We have, I think we have, we're breaking ground on a casino in Chicago. We got the Bethlehem uh, Casino in Pennsylvania. We got three here in the state of Alabama. We got two or three in Florida. We got two or three in California, one in Aruba, and we're branching out from there. And I'm probably missing some, okay? So, it is extremely complicated to fund all these operations, especially the international ones. We had to open up offshore bank accounts, things like that, in order to get it done and get it funded. Oh, we also had that one in Curacao in the Caribbean. So we have two in the Caribbean. But the funding of them is extremely complicated. Now you're, you're dealing with foreign exchange, right? Because you have different currencies. and so Now they all accept U.S. dollar, of course, but... There's different currency exchanges. You have the machines and how that all works with the fintech companies, right? We're partnering with fintechs now to get things done. Uh, a lot of our casinos are going cashless, getting ready for digital currencies to come into play in the near future. Now, when it comes to large corporations, to be able to build these things out is a lot of borrowing and lending, which is why DeFi is going to find its foothold in the borrowing and lending markets and that is where XRP is going to get its initial uh, price appreciation after the AMM is well underway, after the borrowing and lending protocol are done, after they're starting to route ODL payments and their international payments through the liquidity pools. When there's a nice stable coin with a trusted, uh, trusted regulated company behind it, aka Ripple, putting the stable coin on the XRP ledger. That's where this is all going to come into play. And, uh, you know, financial institutions and fintechs that are plugged into Ripple or Medico are going to have the ability to offer their clients loans backed by the blockchain. Now, I don't know if the clients are going to know that they're using blockchain technology, but the financial institution that's offering the service, they will understand that they are actually getting these loans out of pooled assets that are specifically there for borrowing and lending. Now to do that is going to be in the multi-billions, multi-trillions in the future. And that is why we are here. That is why we are invested. We need regulations, stablecoin regulations. We need crypto regulations. It's a global effort. This is not going to be easy guys. This is hard work and it's real. All right. So check this out. In the private Patreon, we were going over the Deloitte Digital Asset Corporation or Digital Assets in Corporations PDF, right? You guys know we only deal with large financial institutions over here on this channel. We don't do much speculation. If it is, it's educated speculation, okay? Now, part of that document was talking about the real world use cases of distributed ledger technology. Now they're not out here saying we're just going to continue to tokenize and coin things and push it on the market and then rug the market. Like, no, that's not happening. That's going to be regulated out in the future. If you're rugging things, it, you're going to jail. I mean, that's that simple. So target targeted treasury considerations, liquidity and payments. They see liquidity and payments as a huge use case. All right. It says, let me make sure you guys can see this. Go down a little bit. Let's see. Hopefully you can see this. I'm going to have to lean in to read it. In the realm of corporate treasury, the landscape of financial transactions and liquidity management is evolving rapidly. Traditional payment systems and liquidity management solutions are being complemented and sometimes even replaced by the emergence of digital assets and cryptocurrencies. While adoption in corporate treasury requires careful consideration, 
there are attractive advantages for businesses looking to streamline their payments and treasury flows, right? Now, I know this is important because my mom works in the treasury department of our corporate side, okay? She is the assistant to our CFO who helped build the Hard Rock Casino chain. It is an international chain, one of the highest grossing casino chains in the world. He now works for us, okay? Now, I'm going to talk to this guy over time, and I'm going to relay it back to my YouTube channel to see what this guy thinks about this technology. I'm going to ease it in. You know, you got to be careful with these big wigs, these suits, but I'm going to ease it in and talk about the problems and the frictions when it comes to getting loans and and lend, uh, the borrowing side of corporate treasury, okay? Now, moving on. Transparency and audibility. The blockchain technology underlying cryptocurrencies provides transparent and immutable transaction records. This feature enhances transparency and simplifies the auditing process. Now, my family, we hire auditors ourselves. They audit us probably once or twice a year, and that's how you stay on point with your taxes and all that. Now, I understand that's very, very important for treasury operations. So is the lending and the borrowing. Now, in the future, if you're custodying assets at Medico, which is be, just being absorbed into Ripple now, it's probably eventually just going to be known as Ripple custody. You're going to be able to tell the custody provider, a.k.a. Medico, hey, you can lend my assets into these pools, okay? That's where a lot of this liquidity is going to come from. It's going to come from the institutional liquidity providers. Now, a lot of that is going to come from retail, but we don't have enough money to really pump this thing like institutions do. Now, when XRP starts pumping, you got to know, is this speculative or is this real world use case, right? Is it the liquidity pools being filled up? What's going on here? All right. That's why we do these deep dives. That's why we have to know everything about this asset class. So when this price starts shooting up to 10 to 15, we understand what's going on and we don't just panic sell or we do something wrong. Right. This is the future of our lives we're talking about here. All right. Not only that, it's my chance to show my family that, you know, hey, I'm an investor. And in the future, I want to open up a venture capital arm and hopefully be in control of not in control, but be able to deploy capital and nice, large sums of capital and allocate capital for my family and for the future generations. So diving deeper through this document, I said Ripple XRP community, listen up. DeFi for institutions will have the highest returns for investors who capitalize on this opportunity. Why do I say that? Because the liquidity at the, at the DEX on the DEXs are going to be where the majority of finance takes place in the near future, right? Internal treasury departments and large and small to medium enterprises will tap in to regulated DeFi protocols with robust liquidity when the time comes. That's on the way. DID, clawback, KYC, AML is critical to this. XRPL is well suited to fit their needs, right? Advantages of this are improved liquidity management, all right? Cryptocurrencies can offer alternative investment options for corporate treasury departments. Companies can invest their excess liquidity in digital assets, potentially earning higher returns compared to traditional investment instruments. Additionally, by leveraging blockchain-based liquidity protocols, businesses can access decentralized finance platforms. I'm going to read that one more again, one more time. Additionally, by leveraging blockchain-based liquidity protocols, businesses can access decentralized finance platforms, lending and borrowing of funds such as notional pooling and concentrated mechanisms. All right. That is the value of DeFi. That is it. Okay. 
that's a very stringent process right now to go to your bank. It takes days to get a loan. And if you're getting a short loan and for instance, I'll just say, what if one of our casinos, like the one in Aruba on the private Island, what if that one needs capital to make payroll or something like that? And it's in a crunch for liquidity. The financial institution that we work with, that we bank with, they'll have ties to RippleNet or Medico or whatever, or just their public blockchain to be able to borrow and lend from these protocols. They will source liquidity from those pools and instantly pay out the casino that's in need of that liquidity. And so you see, guys, what I'm saying here to go back to the first of the videos. I feel like I have an edge on this because I have a front row view to a multi-billion dollar international corporation and how they function. It's crazy. And that's where I think my, my true value comes from is I'm able to show you guys uh, what's, what it looks like behind the scenes of a multi-billion dollar corporation. So XRP, Ripple Community, this one is for us. We have to think critically now. Deloitte, a prestigious financial institution, is speaking facts about the real use case for blockchain. Guess what? It's not memes and jokes. Is for actual DeFi purposes. Check this out. Leveraging blockchain technology for payments and liquidity. Global accessibility. Digital assets have the potential to facilitate cross-border transactions. That's what the X means, cross-border. With greater ease, by leveraging blockchain technology, businesses can optimize financial intermediaries resulting in faster and more cost-effective international payments. This accessibility can significantly enhance liquidity, liquidity management by reducing the time and cost associated with moving funds across borders. I mean, you have to think about this. And I'm going to, this video is going to be specifically revolving around, I guess, my personal edge. But when I think of this and what that's going to do, you know, it might save us, you know, 20, 30 bucks instead of sending the money cross borders because, you know, we're on the right. Like, you know, I'm in the six figure range, but I'm not in the multimillionaire range yet. I'm on the way to that. I'm a career investor. So that will be a reality. But for a multi billion dollar corporation, when they're doing this, this is saving them tons of cash, freeing up tons of liquidity for operational purposes. It is going to be very, very valuable to corporations. I mean, when you really think about this technology and the way it works, it's just one epiphany after the, the next. That's why I'm here. That's why I stay around because I'm constantly having these epiphanies about the technology and about how critical it's going to be to the future. So we have to look, where's Ripple doing this? Like, is Ripple offering treasury services? Ripple Insights, how companies can modernize treasury management. Now, this is from last year. That means it's still relevant. The past few years have been rocky, for treasuries, treasury managers as geopolitical events brought new sanctions, okay? COVID-19 slowed economic growth and raised interest rates and supply chain frictions wrecked havoc on businesses around the world. Now, if one of my cousins that are watching this that are on the executive board of the, of, you know, the government side of our tribe here you know for sure that 2020 was heavy, heavy pressure. We dipped into our cash flow reserves to continue giving the benefits. We also gave a lot of money to the state of Alabama and the surrounding communities, and it was a tight situation. We emerged out of it. We kept our casinos running. We paid our employees through everything. And we did it correctly. So remember that as you're reading this, 
if one of my cousins is listening to this that happens to be on the executive board. I don't know if you are or not. If you are, drop a thumbs up, subscribe. <laughs> Although traditional payment rails are making attempts at modernization, many businesses do not have the time or capital to wait for an antiquated global payment systems to evolve into a more equitable playing field. Legacy payment rails disproportionately serve financial players who tend to have long-standing relationships with correspondent banks as well as ample resources, right? So compounding all this, whilst well-known cross-border payments are messy and fractured, events in recent years have created silo regional pockets that ex exaggerate challenges associated with global treasury management. Increased barriers have led to greater friction in cross-border payments, putting pressure on businesses to diversify suppliers and strategically alter trade corridors. All right, they're talking to banks and financial institutions. As for internal payments landscape becomes ever more complex, treasury managers deserve a forward-thinking solution tailored to fit their business needs, All right? So, Ripple is offering a guide to streamline global treasury flows. I'm going to download this. We'll go over it in the private Patreon. That's where we do our deep dives. That's where we get into it for real, for real. All right? So, you'll have to join the group for that one. All right? Last but not least, Chad Steingraber. I saw this yesterday, and it stuck out to me. And... You know, it just goes to show that everyone's on the same path right now and that the institutional adoption of this technology is going to be in the Treasury Department of large corporations. It's going to be in the financial services of these corporations, such as borrowing and lending. That's what's going to fill up the liquidity pools. And only then will they be able to route these large cross-border payments through, okay? Okay. That, to me, is the secret sauce. Like David Schwartz said, the value proposition of XRP is that it has these liquidity pools that everybody can source liquidity and draw off of. That's the value. Chad Steingraber, Finastra, expands their treasury services with OpenFin. OpenFin, known for its Chromium-based workspace technology, is deployed across 3,800 banks and financial firms. Ripple Payments, Finasher Fusion. So they're streamlining treasury experience. That's a service that Finasher is now offering because they're a Ripple partner and they have the ability to do so now. And here in the near future, they'll be doing that and they'll be paying us to do it because we're going to be providing liquidity to, the, to this service so that, to me, is amazing. Now, on top of that, when Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and all these old partnerships with Ripple, they're using their payment services for cross-border payments and internal payments, they're going to be routing those through the pools, too. So we're going to be making crazy amounts of cash flow by providing liquidity on the best DeFi ecosystem known to man, the XRP ledger. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this content, please drop a thumbs up. Consider, subs consider subscribing. Join the group if you're serious about uh, becoming a career investor. There is a free side to see if you're eligible to join this. So if you want to click the link below on the video, join the free side of the uh, right of this. Join this, the free side under the videos. And uh, there'll be a little video there for you to watch to see if you're eligible. So it's right there. I really appreciate you guys. Um, I'll see you on the next one.